Right, hi everybody. I am incredibly excited to bring you the very first In Conversation with FosterWiki. I'm presenting today, I'm Sarah Anderson, I'm the founder of FosterWiki. And it's incredibly fitting that my first guest, and I'm very privileged to have my first guest on, should be Louise Allen. Louise and I go back a very long way and um, She's one of my most treasured friends. But apart from that, she's a pretty awesome woman as well. She's an, a best-selling author. She's also an artist and she's also a foster carer. But probably the most significant thing she is, is very care experienced herself. Um, if any of you know her books, you'll know that the first one, Thrown Away Child, was autobiographical. Um, and I'm sure she'll tell us a little bit about that, about herself today and her journey. So what I want this to be is um, an, uh, an introduction first so you can meet Louise, because Louise and I will be doing a lot of these. And then after that, we'll go on to our subject of the day or our news item of the day. Now, Louise and I have just had a chat, decided this is going to be a bit unplugged. I don't know how to edit things so we're both <laughs> we're both on pain of death of not saying swear words and behaving ourselves aren't we Louise <laughs> never known to behave ourselves us two but we will have to tone it down a little I'm sure so um okay Louise over to you Let, let's uh, let everybody hear about you and what you do Hi, lovely. Well, thank you, Sarah. Hello, everyone. <laughs> I've been on Foster Wiki Facebook page. If you haven't met me in the past, then it's wonderful to meet you. And if I have met you, hello again. Um, now, my, my reason to be here, well, no, let me make this absolutely clear. I didn't want to be a foster carer. And I have learned that absolutely everything I do reluctantly <laughs> is the things that I end up doing completely. Um, so when we became foster carers, um, which is nearly a decade ago, uh, we, we were naive, didn't know anything. Even though I had been in the care system myself, I was adopted badly, incorrectly, as a child, and then popped in and out of uh, foster care as a child. Um, I was named as a bad child, a wild child. I'm actually quite proud of that one. Thank you very much. <laughs> Nothing's changed much then there, has it? <laughs> Middle-aged wild child now, Sarah. <laughs> Still wild. Um, it's, so I know what it's like to be in the care system. I also experienced all the abuses. You know, again, I see them as a gift. Because if I hadn't experienced all the sexual, emotional, physical abuse that I did, I wouldn't be able to do what I do now. And that is look at things in an informed way. I think over time I have become a bit of a thorn in the side of children's social care, which is a, a badge I'm extremely proud of. And when you are a thorn in an uh, organization or local government, government side, it means you're doing your job properly. Even though I didn't actually get a contract to do this, which, you know, <laughs> I doubt if they <laughs> But we're, we're here because we care. And I, I've got the 360 experience. I, <clears throat> I know what it felt like as a child. I, I, I know what it felt like as a young woman, as a teenager. I know what it felt like as a woman. Uh, and I know what it feels like as a foster care. And believe me, as a, 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 a best-selling author, I get no privileges mm. <laughs> in the care system. No, no, no. You're not special, Louise. You're not I'm special. not special. No one is special. <laughs> Regardless of what they tell you, no one is special. So, mm. I, which is, again... A brilliant thing because I, I get to experience mm. children's social care and fostering and adoption as it is. Mm. And my role now is to report th through my books and through any platform I am invited on to, like today, to tell you how it is, what it is. And I know that when I do that, I speak on behalf of nearly everyone that's listening. So yeah. we're having our time, aren't we, Sarah? We're having yeah. our voice. I actually began to measure my success in the last two years by the people who did not invite me <laughs> mm. to talk to them, yeah. um, which is now how I, I look at things. And I think the fact that 
people like myself and Sarah and so many of you have been ignored and held at arm's length is because we know, we know. Yeah, yeah, the reality, what actually goes on at, at, um, at ground level, you know, it always astounds me that Ofsted never ask us um, anything other than they've got support and training. You know, actually, we could feedback so much about how things work in practice, how policy is actually meted out in the front line. Um, thank you. That's absolutely brilliant. And I know that we're going to be doing hearing a lot more about your story and about, you know, how it's informed your practice and everything as we go along and uh, and lots of other bits as well. Um, shall I get on to our newsy bit this week? Yes. Um, I, I, we wanted to speak this week about um, a big uh, fostering agency buyout that went on last week. Now, many of you who know me will know that I um, have, don't, haven't spoken out hugely about profits in children's care. Not recently, anyway. I've always felt that I'm representing foster carers. I work for improving foster carers lots. And because of that, I've often felt I didn't want those that do work for agencies and like it. And believe you me, there is no better or worse. Local authorities and agencies, carers like, don't they? They like, some prefer a local authority, some prefer an agency. But I've just generally not kind of singled out the profits in order to whatever. But I think the time is right now that, and especially as the care review, Josh McAllister are on board with this as well, that certainly at the top end of the profits, we really start having, having to do something about it. There are plenty of agencies that work in a non-profit way or a charitable way. Um, you know, uh, actually, I think you and I are going to talk about that another day, um, because we have feelings on that as well, too, don't we? Opinions on that too. But we will... We want to, we're not here to denigrate um, agencies or those who work for them, but we're here to examine the people that are actually making profits and, and whether we think they should. So last week, and I'm going to read this because otherwise I won't remember it all. Uh, the announcement came last week that Care Tech, which provides homes to thousands of children in care, is a subject of a multi-million pound turner, uh, takeover. Now, if I got this right, it's Shake Holdings are buying um, Care Tech, which is kind of a big umbrella organisation for lots of fostering agencies um, and some homes and things. Now, they're buying it, they're buying it for £850 million. Yes, I'll repeat that, £850, nearly a billion pounds. Um, and they're taking it off the stock exchange and making it private again. Now, from what I understand, what Financial Times said, um, they believe it's because, and this is because of the care review are looking at profits, they believe that the increased scrutiny of children's social care market is behind care tech's decision to quit the stock market and go private. So they're trying to avoid scrutiny of the profits they're made, making. The Financial Times also said it was in uh, the children's care market is generating super normal profits one of the highest returns in any investment you can get right now. Um, the journalist and foster carer and commentator Martin Barrow has said, this is what happens when you treat vulnerable children like commodities. Steve Crocker, who's actually my director at Hampshire County Council, um, he's just been made the director of the Association of Directors of Children's Services. It's like the Directors Club. Um, he had an inaugural presidential speech last week and he said, let me be clear, profiteering through public money on the basis of meeting children's care needs is unacceptable. So there is a really rising tide against these huge profits. But I want to, I want to just very quickly before I hand over to Louise on this, I want you to hear some of the language that's used around this whole thing of, of um, profit making on children and I, I don't think you'll hear children mentioned much here um, it says uh, this is from the armchair stock trader uh, magazine shake holdings is controlled by Haroon and Farouk Sheikh the founders of Caretech and they're leading a consortium that includes Belgrave Investments and Kensington Capital now they are both vulture cap um, oh I mean venture capitalists don't I they're both, both venture capitalists. The steady growth and ca that Caretech has been experiencing year on year, that includes the pandemic period when Caretech's care revenues did
did not break stride over 2021, the company saw 450 million revenue in 2020, and the estimated revenues for this year are 531 million. God, imagine what we could do with that money, or the children could do with that money. Uh, so go on to say, sadly, human beings and children still require care, regardless of the economic circumstances. Caretakers clearly demonstrated to potential buyers its ability to make money come rain or shine and that they should continue to perform during this current tough environment. In other words, while we're all strapped for cash, children's services strapped for cash, while people can barely pay their day to day um, energy needs, care tech are creaming, you know, raking it in. So one last bit here, it says, apart from treating vulnerable children as commodities, foster carers are in the same boat. Because of the way we are employed by providers we work for, they in effect own us. We have, we've got it on good authority. I'm sure people will write in or, or tell us straight how it does or doesn't work, but we've had it on good authority that foster carers get bought and sold. Yes, folks, you are a commodity that gets bought and sold. Um, when the agencies change hands, you are the goodwill that goes with it, not anything else, you are it. Um, and you are sold for around 150 to 200,000 pounds each. And that is what you add to the value of an agency as well. So no wonder they want to keep you when you try to transfer anything. So uh, that gives you a bit of background on that care tech takeover. I think it's a really, really important um, piece of news. And I know you're super passionate about this subject, Louise. Yes, I am. And thank you. And thank you for bringing me in and this being the first conversation. Mm. Let's go. I only started writing <laughs> because of this issue. Um, I grew up in care. I've experienced physical and emotional extreme harm. My pain is my pain. It's not to be sold. <laughs> Mm, and the pain yeah. of our children is not to be sold i have mm -hmm. so much to say but my main message is stop stop it stop yeah. it now <laughs> local authorities i hear i hear what your your fella said at hampshire but to be quite honest with you it's a bit late you know mm. you knew ages ago that this was going to be happening i tracked it because i'm so passionate about this um every penny that as foster carers or anyone who teaches, anyone advocating for children, every little penny, we have to put so much time and energy into getting secured for our children's basic needs. When you have numbers like 850 million mm. dancing around, it's a no brainer. It has to stop. It's been going on oh, since the seventies. I've traced it back even to the, the architecture of the buildings. Um, wow. When they built those, when they knocked down and they eroded the local offices, do you remember them, those of you who are old enough to have been functioning yeah. <laughs> with your mm -hmm. professional skills mm -hmm. in the 70s, we remember, and before mm -hmm. then, that they had local offices. Those local offices provided a service, a humane service that was built on knowing the community, knowing children, knowing mm -hmm. families. And knowing without judging, knowing that people go through hardship in their lives. They don't have to be poor to go through hardship. Every human being hits the bumps occasionally. And if you have children, you have to hit the bumps with support. Support isn't taking your children away. Support mm -hmm. is support. So when they started, you know, <laughs> knocking down and getting rid of the local services they then start investing in the town or city offices you remember them they're, they're everywhere they're probably yeah, pulling yeah. Them down there they're sort of high-rise flat you know machines for working machines <laughs> for living machines to make loads of money with my mates basically <laughs> and you had an instant hierarchy you had the fellas and maybe the odd woman i don't know at the very top who um, had all the, you know, the big tables and the board meetings, you know, and children's social care could actually impersonate corporate business. And don't even get me started on Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And I hope, Sarah, that we can discuss that. Yeah, in the reality yeah absolutely. Later. Yeah. But you created a pyramid of needs. 
that I would argue aren't even real anymore. And then you have the hierarchy, and then right at the bottom, you have the workers, the social workers, and then but no, believe them, you well, have the yes. You see where I'm going? We with need it? we need a, a new we need a new part of the triangle that's actually underneath the underneath bit, you know, the baseline, isn't it? Where we sort of seem to be we must do below the bottom of the pile. Hierarchy mm. of needs because mm. I've redone it. <laughs> yeah. To fit mm. into the modern society. Mm. And Maslow's hierarchy of needs is part of the reason why they're profiteering, because it's not actually true anymore it's no longer relevant so you ended up in the 70s with social workers who had partners who were accountants and business mm. people who as everyone does so we can do this better what can you do better make money that's what they can do and I think it's been an open market a free market ever since mm. if they cared and this is what I absolutely believe if the children's social services and all those claiming to understand safeguarding, claiming to care about children, we would not have any of this because mm. what is the most important element of safeguarding? Prevention. Yeah. <laughs> so we need yeah. to move. All the money has gone to organizations for profit yeah. for mop up. You yeah, need to yeah. know causes you need to know mm. why and you need to address it if you are not part of that solution you are part of the problem and the problem is you make more and more money the more miserable children's and their families life become and we are doing that brilliantly at the moment and the yeah. other thing that I've really noticed with the, the the profiteering it's not national government that we should be worried about it's your local government we should be worried about look at them look at what they're doing where's the money going i am so passionate about this because i don't think anything in children's social care will improve until we balance out the money we yeah. deal with prevention yes of course there is scope and room for good independent fostering agencies and good independent children's homes but with full-on scrutiny with um mitigation with all yeah. sorts of things that we need to look at we need to reevaluate, to look at who's looking at them who's designing them where are they Mm. what their ethos what all that should be part of the national picture what we've done we've allowed people who are unscrupulous that can say anything they like on their marketing and then we shove the children in there yeah. and i say this every single time if you and i'm talking to all of you now who are you know who you are because everybody wobbles when i talk like this is that if you really cared about the children, mm. it wouldn't be done like this. You would not let this happen. You can stop it. But I think the local authorities and the commissioners are now so scared of the vulture capitalists that they don't know what to do. Yeah, I mean, it does seem I think you're I think you're absolutely what you've hit. The key point for me is prevention. I'm yeah. always saying let's you know never mind fishing them out further down the river let's stop them falling in upstream but until they start listening to us well you know uh, where the problems are upstream but my question to you is do they really want to listen or they have no choice or, here. you no. know there's a, there's a lot of money <laughs> yeah that's what i mean unhappy <laughs> now do they want to be now do they want to be the people who who have created a culture of misery for children. Mm. Do you want a society that is losing money by keeping our future citizens, our workforce, everything else bound in trauma, whatever that might be? Because there's another mm. market I'd love to talk about. <clears throat> mm. But what we've got is we've got a moral decision and moral is a difficult word for me because that can sound a little bit holy but let's talk about ethics let's talk about the future economy of our mm. very very lovely country let's talk about the people we want to live with in, in our community let's talk about what schools can achieve as long as the greedy who don't give a hoot no matter what they say are in control of the money and remember you need to follow the money where does it come from us taxpayers mm. and it's earmarked for yeah. children so why is all the money we yep. earmarked for why? children going Absolutely. off on private yeah.
private blimmin whatevers yeah the yeah. offshore accounts that money is for the children we're scrambling around everyone's going oh they've got emotional health issues mm, mm. Right, how do i deal with that you can't because there's no money so we keep them dangling yes yeah yeah you know well it's a vicious they, vicious circle isn't it it just keeps it turning up. around and around and i think they so many foster care yeah it's social control it is yeah and so many control. foster carers yeah i was kind of I know people watching this, foster carers watching this will be, you know, there's so many struggling for money right now. There's so it's many right. struggling to foster on what they're given. And this really low bar of um, no, no foster care should be out of pocket. It's like, no, nobody should be out of pocket, but not just that they should be recognized for what they're doing. But so many foster carers watching this will be listening to those staggering amounts of money, yeah. um, knowing that their local authorities are, are not effectively slashing their pay because they're not getting increases for years um mm. the tax the tax allowances haven't ch changed for 19 yeah. years yeah. um i think the the it's child different. allowances went up two percent you know and it, they've been similar for years so people yeah. are going to be watching this i mean you know um we we've got so much discussed we're going to break it out break it down over a future for future uh interviews or we will run over time but i'd like to ask you briefly do you have an idea of what how it could be done differently yes of course <laughs> yes of course first of all you've got to you've got you know the whole culture needs to stop lying to itself and us i find it repugnant how they get oh foster carers are so lovely if we were lovely treat us with dignity and respect and pay us properly um, our goodwill, you said the words goodwill. Mm -hmm. Well, I've been scratching my head for many years now as I wander around my life thinking kindness is being cheapened. Kindness has been perceived as a weakness by greedy people in every aspect of our lives, you know, our kindness. Now, fostering only exists because of our goodwill. And I mm -hmm. know that the children I have in placement here wouldn't experience anything that they do if we didn't fund it personally. So it's not only insulting that we are treated as commodities. Mm. And if we're in a, uh, an agency, it doesn't matter if you've got a placement or not, you are adding value to their business. When we come into this to support children, and isn't it really weird how we keep hearing, oh, there's a shortage of foster carers. And why do they keep shoving so many allegations at foster care? Mm, mm. I think the whole thing needs kicking into touch. Yep. It's time for this stupid blah, 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 blahness that's going on because people are protecting their own skins before. Yeah. And that has gone on since time immemorial. And it's time that the, the truth will out and that people like us are heard. And thank you so much, Sarah. For yeah this up because i am just one i am sure of many many voices who have gone enough yes enough stop yeah. hurting and damaging people who don't deserve it and start treating people with respect there are so many things that they could do with foster yeah. carers to stop well, that i think if i could be as rude to interrupt there i would think that one of the basic things for me has always been the central licensing body Absolutely. because then you take that ownership away mm. from the agents it doesn't mean they still can't employ foster carers and things but um where they've got a commodity that is so controlled mm -hmm. um and you know safely controlled that controllable uh, commodity is going mm -hmm. to facilitate these huge you know profits even further so i would that's, that's my kind of point of view is take the ownership away from the local authorities and the agencies let's own our own licenses mm -hmm. I just uh, they do it in France. They've been doing it since 1989 across the pond. So people can't turn around and say, "Oh, that would never work." It does, and it works. There's, a, there's another way of doing this, and 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 I don't mm. I don't know foster carers that go, oh, "I'm going to be a foster carer. I'm going to make loads of money." Yeah, go, okay, I'll be a foster carer because I want to give back. I know mm. I've got the interest, and there are some dodgy foster carers. But to be quite honest, if we had if we took some more control of that, Sarah, we could wheedle them out as well. Yeah. <laughs> Our children are not for sale. Their pain no. is not for sale. We mm. are not for sale. My home mm. is no longer your, your problem. Yeah, yeah. My car, my insurance, mm. I pay for you. Mm. Stop it. You're very rude. Stop mm. it. <laughs> You're only doing it 
and they're only doing it because they can and just like i know and i feel passionate enough that profiteering out of children's misery is another form of abuse why yeah. isn't up there Yes, absolutely. And need to yes, I like that. It. You're very rude. Stop it. <laughs> but well done. Well done on camera for being being toned down to your very rude. <laughs> that was, wasn't it, it? It, you're absolutely right, actually. Is 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 why isn't profit making on the scale the abuse scale? I mean it should be, shouldn't it? Because oh, they don't want it. it is, it's you know, we, can't, we can't use the words that we normally do, can we? The you know what we really think Not about yet, buying no, and selling well, children yeah. and people. But you know, there's no way, no doubt about it. It's it's buying and selling children. It's buying and selling people. I know that you know we can be really unpopular for saying this out loud, you know. But this is the whole point of these conversations that we're going to be having on here we're going to be saying the things people have wanted to say for a long time but have been too scared to say so well follow the money you know as yeah the president's men said in that wonderful docu film you know go watch it follow the money yeah i would be a very wealthy woman by now with my books and all everything else if i went yes they're so amazing i love the work mm -hmm. you do Mm. You know, if I was like that, but I am not, I am here yeah. for the children, like most of us, and making oodles of money from children you never meet, never know, mm. and encouraging that misery by not putting in preventative actions and, and ideas. You look at any, you know, what we need now is a good accountant to look at the, 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 the outgoings yeah. through, through commissioning to the IFAs and the mm. private does compared to what the local authorities are putting in for prevention yeah. and foster carers are key in prevention because some of yes, us yeah. work with families directly mm. not stupid mm. mm. with their clipboards and their attitude but genuinely good authentic work mm. they don't they only use us as slave labor they only use us as cheap labor and that is mm. so insulting and yes it is it's their fair attitude room, fair room and big heart yeah. yeah i mean our role was professionalized years ago it's just that the narrative hasn't caught up with it being professional doesn't mean you don't love and nurture children in a family setting it simply means that in the other part of your role you are, are a professional and we don't get paid accordingly however um I brilliant conversation and I think that it we can expand on so much of this in future as I say we are bringing conversations that people don't want to hear most of us like Louise um putting their lives on the line because of it because very often people won't speak out to this degree because we're all subject to allegations and the allegation system which we were talking about extensively people often say oh don't keep on about allegations but actually, it is it is what controls your life as a foster carer. Um, you live in the shadow of allegations. You're afraid to speak out because of allegations, afraid to ask for pay rises. You know, it's all about that, because as we know, sadly, the allegation system is misused across the board. Misused. That's our polite word for today. Is that, it's, like, it's very rude. That's just like very, very rude. rude. To make it's, our, it's our polite delivery. word of the day. Right. Oh, just stop it. Just do the I'm, right thing. Do I'm the gonna, right thing. Yeah, do children. the right thing. I'm going to finish with three quick fire questions Ooh, okay. for you. And may this be the, the start of very, very, very many in conversations with. And uh, we have got so many topics to cover. I'll just let you know before we go that the next in conversation with is with a gentleman called Phil Sharrock, who's going to be talking to me about two things that are dear to his heart and I'm sure Louise is as well, everybody's, is contact after a child's been moved on um, and the impact it has on the children when, when that is stopped or refused, which it is very, very often, despite all the campaigns. The second subject, again, I'll, I'll press the on button here because I know Louise has got a lot to say. Well, they need a whole, um, whole different interview for this one, is the empty beds. Um, foster mm -hmm. carers within agencies with empty beds. So, um, so I'm going to talk to Phil Sharrock. So, so press the subscribe button so that you don't miss any of these. Uh, we will. This is work in progress. So if anyone's watching and thinks it's a bit like a train crash, I think we did quite well actually. Um, you'll uh, and who knows? I might press the record to send it to our. I've got a pro production team doing the actual um, YouTube channel. 
who knows whether this recording will work and I'll get it to them safely. <laughs> we may be here again doing it. But so before we go, thank you everybody for listening and please tune in next time. Got and three questions. Yeah, I'm going to do the three quick fire questions now. So number one is, would you make, recommend fostering to a friend? No. Okay. What do you think is the single most important thing that would improve things? Prevention. Prevention, yeah. And why do you foster? Because I care. Lovely. I'll leave you with those two, three fantastic answers. And uh, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Louise. And we'll sure. see you very, very soon. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Lovely to meet you all. Mm -hmm.